Okay. Hello, everybody. Uh, some of you know me already. Uh, my name is Richard Caceres. Uh, I am, uh, this is about me. I'm a designer and developer uh, currently working at archive.org, uh, which is really exciting. Uh, but previously, uh, I was a co founder of my uh, a startup, a Wildlands, and then uh, another small startup called Cargo Collective. Um, I have sort of a hybrid design and a computer science background. Uh, follow me on Twitter if you want, and that's my website so you can see some of the projects I worked on. Um, but today I'm here to talk about a uh, text editor, which is uh, started as a Hello World kind of app for a uh, sandstorm, um, but has evolved to have more features. And uh, I actually use it every day, so, um, so that's good inspiration to keep working on. Me too. Cool. <laughs> So, uh, so uh, making the slide just kind of new to me, so I thought I would start with a summary. Um, but basically, uh, I'd like to talk today about uh, some of the uh, design process that went into text editor that might not be apparent when you just install it. Um, and so, you know, I think what's great about Sandstorm is how it uh, fosters like open source development and. Uh, but, and I think that's great, and, and in theory, it's really great if you want to change a program, you can uh, fork it and then uh, learn how the code works, and then modify it, and then learn to build it and build it and upload it, and then maintain a fork, which is actually a lot of work. So I'd like to argue uh, that uh, I think we should, as developers, try to build a little bit more customization into our apps so that, uh, so that it can fit to more people's needs and preferences. Um, so, and then I also uh, like to share some of the design principles uh, that I used in making the text editor. So, uh, just a summary: free so software out of uh, the GNU manifesto. You know, free to run the program, free to make changes, free to distribute it, and, and all that. And all that's really great. Uh, but uh, like I just said earlier, it's sometimes it's a little too much work to. Uh, to fork it and make changes. So, uh, what makes good free software? It it works first of all. Um, the features are simple. I, I I think it needs to be simple to not try to do too much, not be overcomplicated. Um, in addition, I think if you're releasing the source code with hopes for people to modify it, you should try to make the source code clean and simple as possible and understandable so that other people can go in and modify it. Um, and then finally. Even better, um, make it extensible, configurable. So, uh, well, just a summary of why Sandstorm is uh, a great tool. Is, uh, it makes it easy to build your own tools, uh, share the tools you build, and use other people's tools. Um, and it's also much simpler just to have everything on one machine than scattered across you know, the world. And I made this diagram of a while ago when I was working on a blog post. <laughs> so uh, you can see that's kind of like your data everywhere, all around the world, versus you have one computer hosted somewhere, you know, Digital Ocean, Amazon, or in, in your home, and all your stuff is on there. <laughs> so uh, so um, I'm really passionate about uh, like the design of apps, and so, you know, some people, just to make clear, I don't mean decoration, like uh, fancy colors or fonts and stuff. I'm talking about, you know, functional, efficient, ergonomic, uh, makes you happy when you're using it. Uh, focus on the tool, you know, good design is invisible. You just want get, to get it done, you know. Maybe you throw in a little flourishes, like some color, um, but try to keep it really simple. And then consistency is also important. Um, to reduce the context switches when uh, working in many, many apps. You know, in Sandstorm, you have lots of different apps. And uh, I think it would be really great if there was some consistency that developers use in, uh, in the design so that once you get to know how to use one app, it's easier to use another app. Uh, and uh, just looks more consistent. So 
Um, an example of this, which uh, isn't open source, is Mac OS X. I think they did a really great job of creating a consistent, consistent visual language between their apps and user interfaces. On the web, Google Apps does a similar thing. So here's some screenshots of Mac OS apps I use. Uh, this is their Notepad app, which was released recently, which uh, I'd like to, it's in the back of my mind to try to create an open source, maybe web-based port of this. So uh, there's a simple sidebar and the text, and then there's lots of buttons on the top there. But if you use Mac OS, you'll find that these are very, it looks very similar to other apps, like the Maps app or uh, email app. So I think it would be really great to have a consistent set of apps, uh, you know, for Sanso. Um, so some success, just a very small, tiny list of apps, uh, open source projects that I think have, have successfully designed. Uh, Atom Editor, which is the editor by GitHub, uh, which I have a picture of here. I think this is, they do a really good job of having subtle, really functional design with some subtle things like this nice blue border here. I really enjoy that. And, uh, you know, the blue here. And, uh, but it's also super customizable, like extremely customizable. And you can even go down and edit the CSS of the editor. Um, processing, um, which I took some, some of the classes I took in college use processing, uh, has really great design as well. Um, very simple for, for newcomers to programming. They just type in their code and press play, and they use it. Uh, there's some subtle things uh, to make it enjoyable, like the colors. And then, uh, just to use a Samsung example, I enjoy Weekend, uh, the, the Trello clone. So uh, what are some good visual guidelines for a Samsung application? Well, I found that using a single column works best because uh, Sandstorm already has a column on the side. And so if you add two columns on your app, you're adding, you're nesting column layouts. And I think that it's best to just keep it a single column or, or do something more like this where it's sliding over. But the traditional web layout of a two column layout doesn't really work, I find. Um, and then also, I think just uh, keeping it basic with the system fonts works fine. And that's what, in text editor, uh, the default font, the fonts you can choose are the system fonts, which are sans serif, uh, serif, monospace. And these look great, you know, whatever device you're on. Um, so, you know, avoid too many icons or graphics or visual elements. Try to keep it simple. And then uh, I think every app would benefit from allowing you to customize the CSS. I, I think that's really important. Um, and in text editor, you can do that now. So like I said, if, if, app, if app developers followed similar guidelines, you know, uh, it might kind of bring the look and feel and, of different apps closer together. So text editor is an example of following this. Um, you know, that's uh, it on GitHub. Ask you a question. Yes. Uh, so why should different apps work the same? I think if you're using Sandstorm in your daily life, it's a little bit easier when everything is kind of more unified, just like the example of the, the Mac OS apps you know, a consistent uh, experience, user interface experience. You know, if you're you're jumping between apps in a single in a single session, it's cognitive cognitive switch to remember like, oh yeah, this is this way and this is that way, and oh this header's really big and, and all this different stuff. And you just try to keep it simple, in my opinion. Um, so, yeah. That's it. Please start if you if you use it. Uh, that would make me really happy. <laughs> <laughs> um, so here's a screenshot text editor in case you haven't seen it. Um, so 
the recent feature is uh, there's a footer now that tells you if you're connected and the settings store. So this, I thought about different ways to build in more complexity into, into a basic text editor, but uh, not uh, over clutter the design. So I, I ended up doing a footer that has a drawer. And uh, so that's what happens when you open the drawer. You can see font fam choose the font family, font size. There's themes. You can toggle light and dark, which the next slide shows. So um, you press that toggle button and it'll, it'll actually animate, so dark. Um, you can choose a different theme here, and that's just changing the CSS. Uh, and then finally, if you really want to, you can go in there and change the CSS to however you want. Uh, and uh, you know, it also works mobile. Just show that. Uh, so the, the text editor is stack. There's a sandstorm, of course, this handles what I call the document life cycle. You know, it does a lot more than that, uh, the security as well. But, uh, and then Meteor handles the real-time data sync. So text editor is actually real-time. If someone else opens it, we share it with somebody who can see the handles. And then uh, I'm actually using web components and Polymer for the UI building blocks. And Flexbox, which is a new CSS feature for the layout. So, if you're not familiar with web components, it's a new standard that's being developed for HTML that allows you to find custom tags that encapsulate uh, certain functionality. So you could have like a map tag that takes a, a location or attribute and displays a map. Or, or you can have a, a drawer or something. And I'm using it because as a developer, I get framework fatigue and web components uh, works in all these different contexts. So that's one reason. The goal is possibly to make cons a, set of, a set of UI components that uh, would work in different, across di a bunch of different apps. So here's a web component example. Uh, paper drawer is uh, made by Google. And uh, it does what you saw in the other screenshot, where you wrap your code in a paper drawer, and then there's a drawer element and a content element, and then when you click the button, um, which actually I removed here, but the button is in this footer, uh, it opens the drawer. And then Flexbox is really, really simple. I highly recommend it. Um, so this code right here, this is the complete code snippet um, that generates uh, this layout right here with a footer and then a, an area that fills up the rest of the vertical space. So, um, so a few uh, gotchas, or, um, which I talked about in another talk the last time, was uh, once you release an app, you're kind of stuck supporting those, uh, that stack. So in my case, uh, the text document is stored in MongoDB when it could possibly have been stored in a text file. Um, and uh, so it's just something to be aware of. Like it's different from creating a web service, for example, where you could just completely migrate to a completely different web stack without the user knowing. Here, because you have people uh, using your app and it's having it installed, you kind of have to build your migrations like into your app. So text editor from here on out always has to know that at one point MongoDB was used. Um, and then uh, I used to have header issues uh, one sec, but then uh, Kenton's package uh, fixed that. So now headers uh, permissions work perfectly fine. What was your question? Oh, I, uh, I'm not sure if it's a question about your app or if that's transparent, but is there a notion of version of an app? Like when you're saying now I'm no longer going to use my code? Every, oh, Maybe Kenton, do you want to answer that? Um, well, there's a notion of versions of apps in that Sandstorm um, wants to make sure it's always upgrading new, so each package has a version number. But you're asking about migration of the, uh, the data format, and that's pretty much up to the app to, um, to figure out. On startup, it needs to check, like, is this data in an older version? And if so, then do the migration right then. But you could say uh, there's a new version, and that new version can handle the migration. Yeah. And 
again, open up the app there again. The problem is, he, um, his new versions of his app always have to support all the old data formats, at least as a migration step. So text editor will always have to have MongoDB in it, the MongoDB binary array mode, so that it can read old MongoDB databases for the purpose of migrating. Now, it, it may be that you can get away with running it most of the time, since it's only needed for the migration, but you still end up needing to include it in the package. Yeah, yeah. I could like do something crazy, like extract the data from MongoDB, and then like delete MongoDB or something. <laughs> <laughs> or, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you know, I think as long as you don't put anything in MongoDB, it stays relatively small. <laughs> <laughs> It didn't used to be true, that's why I'm laughing. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what's next? Uh, so, I'm similar notion. Uh, the next thing I'd like to work on for text editor is uh, make it a little more efficient. Uh, I'm kind of a little embarrassed to say that every time uh, it saves, and in fact on every keystroke it sends the whole text to the server, because that's how MongoDB, I mean uh, Meteor works. So, I'd like to uh, implement an operational transform on there, so it's only sending the delta. Uh, that would be a lot more efficient. Um, and then uh, I'm also working on a bookmarks app, which I put into the Samsung community thing. Uh, and here's a screenshot of it. Um, I haven't added the CSS editing yet, but it's very basic. It's kind of a, more of a Twitter-like thing where you can put in full text. Uh, you can have multiple links, for example. Um, you can filter dynamically. So that's it. So uh, those are mostly my opinions about design. I'm curious if other people have con con conflicting views or if they agree. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>